Hey friends, welcome to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we read 2 Chronicles chapter 25. And um, today's video is a little bit different. We kind of videoed how we did it. And we did it a little more formally just so we were in the same spot and we could film us. Um, but we read through our chapter at the table and then we discussed it kind of like we would do um, in preparation for a video. Sometimes we read all together, sometimes we read separately, sometimes someone's reading it to us while the others are cooking and fixing dinner. Um, but we, what we really wanted is to give you a, a glimpse of like our family time. This is how we do it, there's no right or wrong way, and this isn't how we do it every single day. Sometimes half the family's here and the other families that practice or something. Um, but I don't want you to think like what you see, the end result videos that we have, that we read through scripture. There's no way you'll think we're perfect because there's Orville. But when we read through scripture, all of our kids don't have amazing, huge takeaways. I don't have amazing, huge takeaways right off the bat. And um, so we just wanted to share like real life, us talking through it, us processing it. Sometimes kids have takeaways, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, sometimes they don't, and it's just real life. We just wanted you to have a glimpse behind the curtain, the black and white striped curtains of what we do here. All right, we hope you enjoy it. Bye. Bye. We're going to show the process, and we'll oh, see. Oh, I thought we were going to, like, uh, we'll we see if we talk about the process. Okay. Love the process. Love Can we the process. like process. Mm -hmm. It's so hot in here. Take off a jacket. I'm cold. <gasps> okay, let's read. Fun with it, on Jeb. Jeb, hear me. Okay, chapter 25. Amaziah reigns in Judah. Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. Is that in the His mother's name was. his father's in the city of David. So give us a recap. Okay, so here's, here's the recap. So Amaziah is the eighth king in Judah. He uh, he initially starts out right. So you can see a couple things happening. So his dad was murdered. And so when he becomes king, he, um, he, he went after and he punished the guys who murdered his dad. But he didn't do it out of revenge. He did it out of justice. Out of justice was he killed the guys who killed his dad. Revenge would have been if he had killed their whole families. So he didn't go above there. But the very next verse says that he took a census of the whole nation. Well, who got in trouble for that originally was, was David. David. And so even though he did what was right in verse 4, by verse 5, he's showing what was wrong. So then he's, he's about to go to battle against the Edomites. And so he decides he's going to get his army together, but he doesn't think he's got enough guys. So he hires an army from the northern kingdom of Israel, and he brings them in and he pays them to fight on his side. But a prophet says, he said, look, those people don't worship God. He says, so don't take them. He said, but I've already paid them. He said, well, look, the money's gone. You just send them on their way. God can always take care of your needs. Okay, we sent them home. Well, that made them mad. So when they went home, they started capturing all the towns and like stealing from all the towns on their way home. Well, Amaziah, Amaziah goes into battle and he defeats the Edomites. He wins. But when he comes home, he gets a little too big for his britches and he decides he wants to go fight the king of Israel. Because, because yeah. He wants to fight them because, remember, his soldiers had, like, stolen from him on their way home. And so he wants revenge now. And so this king has kind of a parable. You know how Jesus tells parables? He tells a parable has an earthly story but a heavenly meaning. And he says, look, he said, you're to me, I'm like a cedar tree growing up. You're like a thorn bush. And you're trying to equal me. He said, this is not going to end well. Go home and be satisfied with your win." But he wouldn't do it. His pride wanted him to fight. And so he went and fought. And he got whooped. Because he would not listen to God. Mm -hmm. It may be that when he paid those guys to come fight with him. And then the Lord told him, you know, you send those people home. And that they mistreated his people. 
it may be that he was kind of mad at God or something. He was like, well, if, if I, I thought I was doing right, but they caused me more trouble. So he, he just kind of keeps wandering further and from the Lord and, and it doesn't, and it doesn't turn out right. Matter of fact, it says he would not listen. And uh, so he's got his pride. He's, amb he's, he's, he's got, he's got ambition, selfish ambition, and everything just kind of goes down, down, down for him. That's the, that's the chapter. John, what would you get out of that chapter? What do you think is important? <laughs> Everybody think about what's one question you have, what's something you found important, or something you remember. Uh, I found something. Okay. It wasn't like a super great part, but it was in verse 4. But he did not put their children to death according to what is written in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, Fathers shall not die because of their children, nor children die because of their fathers, but each shall die for his own sin. Uh, that last part, that's sorry, the big part, but he shall die for his own sin. Um, so uh, we're all guilty for like our own sin, um, and it's nobody else's fault but ours. But everybody sins because all fall short of uh, the glory of God. Uh, the glory of God. Um, but uh, that that's like um, like everything in the Bible really points towards the cross, and so right there. Um, it points towards Jesus dying for our sin and uh, instead of us. I think that's perfect. The wages of sin is always what? Yes. That's exactly right. John, what do you remember about the story? What stuck out to you? Jeb, what do you what do you think? What do you remember us talking about? Well, um, when uh, when it was like how what whatever his name was that king guy uh, disobeyed uh, Jesus and he did. And he went to war, how he got punished in the war, pretty much, mm -hmm. because he got defeated easily. Okay, yeah. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us something about not being too prideful and about like listening to... Yeah, listening to God. Listening to God. Well, I think it's interesting because in one... In one instance, God wants him to go to war, and he's going to be with him, and he's going to give him the victory. And that was that was according to God's will. But then the next time when he wants to go to war, God's like, mm -mm, that's not something you're supposed to do. So it's not like the act of doing a specific thing, but it's actually following God is a step-by-step -step checking with God what I should do. And so it's not like, ooh, last time... He wanted me to go to war, so every time it's good for me to go to war. But it's like checking up with God in even small decisions and even small choices we make. I heard somebody say one time, "There's like I don't real, I don't, I don't understand why I gotta, I gotta check with God over every big decision in my life." And then a more mature person said, "Man, you don't just have to check with God over every big decision of your life. You need to check with God when you go to Walmart." <laughs> like we check with God about everything because He's He's our boss. John, you got anything from this chapter that stuck out? Um. Uh. Uh. Did you get anything from this chapter? Oh, y'all kind of said it. Oh, um, there you go. Um, I, I, I don't know. Just reading through these kings, something that where we would judge a small decision or a small action. It's those small things that add up into like which direction their heart is going. And so, it, you know, talking about do we go to God about all those little things, I think that's really important. And it may not have to be like now I'm laying me down to sleep a whole prayer every time we have to make a decision, but like just daily walking closely with Him and checking up with Him like, hey, God, is, you know, are my plans today according to your will? Is this, you know, are you pleased with these things that I'm doing? Yeah. When uh, lately in my prayers, um, I kind of I, I keep coming back to this idea of asking the Holy Spirit every day to take control of my thoughts and my feelings so that I would do the right thing. And when I read through this, like remember how he paid that other army to go to him? When you when you read this story, he paid them about seven thousand five hundred pounds of silver. That's a that's a that's a truckload of silver. And then he just told them to go home. And I wrote here in the margins of my Bible, I wrote that we should always obey God, even if it costs us. Mm. 
uh, because obedience is always more important than that. And so that's just kind of what I got out of the chapter. Did uh, anybody else say anything else? Nope. All right. All right. Well, uh, what do we do with them? Hey, welcome to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we've studied 2 Chronicles chapter 25. This is just kind of how we did it tonight. Hope you saw something that maybe you could do with your family. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you tomorrow when we go to chapter number 26. Bye. Bye. Bye.